Welcome back, America. We're here with a tremendous guest, the former Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. The reason I thought it was important for the American people, and in fact the world, to hear from you, Mr. Prime Minister, is because this nuclear deal appears to be getting very, very close between uh, the United States and Iran. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and I'm concerned there's not enough focus on this. So let's start this way. What would a nuclear Iran mean to the region, to the world, to the United States? I think it would be a catastrophic development, and I choose my words carefully. To have a, a terrorist rogue regime that is animated by a, a crazy ideology that chants death to America, death to Israel, that wants to subjugate the entire Muslim world, that views everyone else as dangerous infidels that could, should be either subordinated to them or killed. To have the Ayatollahs have nuclear weapons is the most dangerous development on the world scene that we could possibly imagine. But that's exactly where this deal is leading. It's not def preventing Iran from getting nuclear weapons. It's going to pave their way to get nuclear weapons, and it's paving their way with gold, with hundreds of billions of dollars that they're going to get to boot. A nuclear arsenal and hundreds of billions of dollars to purvey their terror, to purvey their aggression. That's crazy. I, I would ask you this. Um, we're not hearing a lot, certainly not in the United States, from the government of Israel. We're not hearing a lot from Prime Minister Bennett. You know, in 2015, you came to the United States, you spoke to the entire Congress, really to America and the entire world, objecting. Uh, to what the uh, then administration was doing with this first nuclear deal. This apparently is much worse. And I have to tell you, as an American citizen sitting here, I am not hearing objections. Certainly, if they're made, they're not made in a proper form or they're not made consistency from the current Israeli government. Now, why would that be? Mark, you're going to have to ask them that question, but I can tell you what my policy uh, has been and is and will be. It's to speak out forcefully against this warp deal, this dangerous deal that puts in peril the survival of my country, the security of uh, America, the security of the world. And I think it's the responsibility of leaders to, to speak the truth, on especially on matters that determine our future and could uh, jeopardize our future. So I, you know, I spoke that like it wasn't easy coming to Congress. It's not easy challenging the U.S. president. America is our greatest ally. But when the policy is wrong, you have to speak up. And it doesn't matter who's sitting there in the White House. What's important is what is the policy? And this policy is wrong. This agreement was supposed to be, Mark, uh, stronger and longer. It's actually weaker and shorter. And you know why it's weaker and shorter? Because, well, actually, President Obama said it right. He said on in a moment of candor in 2015, he said, uh, you know, within 12 years and on, which means by 2027, uh, at the time when the deal was signed, within 12 years, the Iranians will have advanced centrifuges, and therefore the breakout time to a nuclear bomb, he said, will be practically down to zero. Now, this deal doesn't push the date forward. It says exactly that. In 2027, which is five years from now, Iran will have a breakout capacity, the capacity to enrich enough uranium for an arsenal of nuclear bombs, and they can do that with a housekeeping seal of approval of this international agreement. That is not merely nonsensical. It's very, very dangerous for the future of the world. Because you've got to understand, this deal not only lets Iran achieve an arsenal of nuclear bombs, it doesn't prevent them from creating the missiles to bring them to you. They're developing ballistic missiles, ultimately intercontinental ballistic missiles, that can take nuclear warheads, nuclear bombs, put them on the missile and deliver them to any place in the United States. In fact, any place in the world. That is a different world. We can't go there. It makes a hell of a difference if... If Holland has nuclear weapons, or the Ayatollahs have nuclear weapons. And when people who are so suffused with hatred and with the desire for destruction, when you give them the weapons of mass death to deliver to a theater near you, they'll get there. That changes history. 
And we cannot allow that to happen. This deal has to be opposed. If it's signed, then I expect a future administration to leave the deal and prevent Iran from having nuclear weapons in any way possible. That would be my policy. You ask what my policy was? That's my policy. I said from the start, you can sign this deal, with a deal, without a deal. I, as the Prime Minister of Israel, will do whatever I have to do to make sure Iran doesn't get nuclear weapons, both for the security and survival of my country, but I think for the security and peace of the entire world. And if they have nuclear weapons, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, what's to stop them from blackmailing their neighbors? What's to stop them from invading their neighbors? What's to stop them, for instance, further unleashing Hezbollah against Israel and threatening that if, if uh, any of these Arab countries or Israel take certain actions, that they'll use these weapons. So it is a complete game changer for the Middle East, isn't it? For the world. For the world. First of all, they can put the entire world, they can uh, take the entire world hostage. You know, once you have a, a predatory and especially in a, a, a rogue uh, theocratic regime like this have nuclear weapons, they can use them in two ways. One, they can threaten you directly with atomic bombs. Secondly, they have a nuclear umbrella, which is what you just mentioned, to threaten you with conventional weapons like regular missiles or terrorists or anything else. Uh, and that gives them awesome power. And I, I think you have to understand that I think Iran would be a nuclear power different from all the other nuclear powers, and some of them are bad enough, but I think they won't obey any rules. And this is so dangerous. Dangerous for Americans, dangerous for Israelis, dangerous for Arabs, uh, dangerous for Europeans. I think it's, it's just, it changes history. And that's why I took the unusual step of coming to the Congress, uh, speaking there, uh, something that was not easy to do. And I'm doing it now too, and I'm going to continue doing this. And I think it's important to prevent Iran from having those means. And by the way, it's, if you want to understand how bad this deal is, it not only gives Iran the freedom uh, with an international legitimacy to, uh, to enrich uranium on an unlimited quantity with much more sophisticated centrifuges in just a few years. It also gives them money, an enormous amount of money to boot. I mean, they're not, it's so absurd. They're lifting sanctions from these terrorists. The other day, just this week, Iran fired, the Revolutionary Guards of Iran, fired a missile right in the vicinity of the U.S. consulate in Erbil in Iraq, okay? Those people who are firing these missiles, those people who have murdered Americans left and right, those people who are responsible for more terrorism around the world than anyone else, those people are going to be lifted off sanctions. Uh, that's what, <laughs> what the Iranians are demanding. So this is absurd. This is the kowtowing of the democratic world, uh, unfortunately, of the rest of the world, to this rogue regime, giving it both the weapons of mass death and enormous pile of cash to boot to continue their aggression. It just doesn't make sense. One of the complaints, Mr. Prime Minister, from our Congress is that they've been left out of this, that they really don't have a role, that they really don't know what's taking place despite federal law that requires it. Uh, that the administration is negotiating this or having others negotiate for them. 